Hi, and welcome to my channel, Laura's Library Card. So today's video is going to be what I have currently checked out on my library card and my bookshelf tour. And you're like, but Laura, your bookshelves are empty. And I'm like, that's because I have to talk about what I have checked out and that's what's going on the bookshelf. So I have a bookshelf in my lot in my living room and it's about five feet tall. And so I debated a little bit before I started this channel about moving that here. I'm kind of doing everything in my guest room. Um, but it's short and I want to stand for my videos. So I just decided not to move everything. Um, and then after a while I was like, well, I want something behind me. So I bought a full size bookshelf. So yes, I do want books behind me, but I don't think right now this could change. I don't think right now I want to move very many of my books from my living room shelf to this bookshelf. Um, I basically just want to use this bookshelf as pretty decoration behind me and to put my library books and the books that I plan to talk about on my channel on this bookcase. Um, so that being said, let's run through what I have checked out, all the physical stuff that I have checked out on my library card, and I will put them on this bookshelf and it will be a library haul, what I have checked out, bookshelf tour. Let's get started. So in my house next to my front door, I have a little two shelf falling apart crappy book stand and that's where we put our keys and mail and packages and it's just sort of like a dumping ground. But when I'm done with items that need to go back to the library, I usually stick them on that shelf and then they're right there by the front door. When I'm ready to run to the library, I can just grab them and go. So probably that's what I'll do here is I'll have all the things I just got from the library and what I want to read and what I'm working on up here on this bookshelf. And then when it disappears, it's probably just because I'm not going to read it or I'm already done with it. So let's start. The oldest book that I have checked out from the library, oldest for me, is called Recursion by Blake Crouch. I say oldest because I got this before the pandemic started. <clears throat> the library probably thought I lost this. Um, I picked this book for a book club I'm in with a bunch of old people and they were kind of like, oh, I don't know, how's this book gonna go? Uh, but then that book club never happened because pandemic. So yeah, um, I remember wanting to read this just because it has stuff to do with like memory and it's sort of a mystery as to what's happening because people are remembering things that they shouldn't be remembering. Um, I don't know anything else about it because I've not read it before. But uh, also I, this cover is like really shiny, not just because of the library classic cover, but the like figure eight thing. Um, you probably can't see that. But uh, yeah, so I <laughs> had the whole pandemic. I mean, I was working the whole time, but I didn't read this book, but I'm still interested in reading recursion. Um, and that's because I just love like memory things, things that are just like twisty with your brain, probably because I was a neuroscience major and I'm a nerd. Next on my list is House of Leaves with this weird binding with like no cover uh, by Mark Z. Danielewski by Zampano. Unclear. Um, I, ha I got this book out because I'd seen things on the internet that said it was just like weird. It was just like this total trip from start to finish. Um, I literally did not know anything else about that other than like, well, I like weird stuff sometimes. Um, and so it definitely like has interesting like formatting choices and like there's like weird like notes and stuff there's all these footnotes here and like it changes font part way through um it says pages missing there's like a bunch of x's and stuff like like i remember it, like things are sideways so yeah someone told me that this is actually like a horror book and i didn't realize that and i'm not very well versed in the horror genre but Maybe I'll start it and get so confused that I'll stop. But if I ever start it, I'll let you know. The next book I have checked out is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. Um, I checked this out right after I read Heartstopper, um, just because I was like, I loved Heartstopper and I was like, well, I wanna read more by this author. Um, I don't know anything else about it. Um, 
Right, okay, so this is about like a, a boy and a girl who become friends over this like podcast. And is it going to be a love story? Is it not going to be a love story? Um, I think I remember looking this up at one point and people were just saying that like, it's actually a friendship story, which I would be thrilled for. Next on the list is The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule, and the subtitle is Ted Bundy, The Classic Case of Serial Murder. So Anne Rule is a um, person who's written a ton of like true crime books, crime journalism books. Um, and I actually got this book out like a year ago and read maybe the first 30 pages or so. Um, Anne Rule actually knew Ted Bundy. They worked together at a school like suicide hotline training, something like that. Like she knew him and they were friends, like they were peers and didn't know that he was a killer. So she not only goes through, you know, his murders and the things that he did, but she also brings this perspective of like, and I knew this guy and here's how he came across to me before he was ever convicted or in trouble or caught for any of the murders or did any of his jail time or anything. So it sounds creepy and, um, I don't super care particularly about Ted Bundy in particular. He's, he's not like my favorite or least favorite. I don't have favorites when it comes to serial killers, but I think this book might be super interesting. In mid-August, I did a historical romance readathon, and I had decided to do that because the um, group pick was instantly available, and the other book that I read for that was uh, also available at my library for pickup. So I went to the library to grab The Beast of Bezik and also because I had a few holds. So so Check Please was one of the holds that I picked up. This is by Ngozi Ukazu. Ukazu? Um, I've seen this a couple times on booktube. It is an adorable graphic novel um, where the main character plays hockey and bakes and it is not 100% straight. I don't know if he's bi or if he's gay or other or whatever. Um, but I think it's like a cute little like super slow burn love story about this college kid who bakes and is on the hockey team. So it sounded adorable and I've heard just cute little gushy things about it so I had to check it out. Another hold that was available the same day was 100 Love Sonnets by Pablo Neruda. So this is a translated work um, translated by Stephen Tapscott. And so the Spanish is on the left and the English is on the right. And even though I don't speak Spanish, it's been kind of fun to see the Spanish original version next to the English version. And I love picking up um, poetry books. I don't really like sit and read them. I just kind of like dip in and out for two months and then I return them. <laughs> so um, I've read a couple in here and they've been lovely. And um, I think I also grabbed one other book that I showed during that historical romance readathon uh, video, and that was Tempest by Beverly Jenkins. Um, I never got to that for this weekend, for that weekend of historical romance readathon, but I still have it checked out, and I intend to get to it someday. So I was at the library picking up stuff for historical romance readathon, picking up my holds, and then I just wandered over to their new stuff, and I was like, this is all great, and I ended up getting multiple books on that trip, even though I was in the middle of August and had a dedicated TBR and was never going to get to finish it. So I don't know why I got so many books out, but I'm excited because now I have a whole bunch of books that I can work on for September. So over in the new section, I saw... A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, which is by Hank Green. This is the sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. Um, I read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, I think, in like January or maybe December. Um, I knew I was like really behind on that. It came out a couple years ago, but I finally just got around to see to reading it and I enjoyed it. I really liked the premise um, about sort of like where did these robot thingies come from and like they're kind of like throughout the course of the book they're like this is less and less it's more and more clear that these are like alien like not human made things and so then the book ends in like a big action sequence sort of and uh, one of the other things I really liked about um the first book an absolutely remarkable thing hard to remember that title um is that there was this like collective dream that was happening um, as I mentioned earlier with recursion that I really like like mind twisty stuff, dreams and um, and memories and that, all that kind of stuff just kind of like I really like the idea of that. 
And so I found that really an interesting element for the first book. And so I am interested to getting to the second book. Hi, cat. My cat's in here now, so sorry if there are meows. Another book that I found that same day over in the news section is The Deep by Alma Katsu. I cannot remember which booktuber I had just seen like the day before I was at the library review this book and they saw said that it was super interesting and like kind of creepy and I just like saw it and was like oh yeah th somebody mentioned that within the last 24 hours that I that I saw um so I wanted to get it and I don't even remember what it's about. Oh, okay, so it's about like Titanic stuff. It says there's mysterious disappearances and sudden deaths on the Titanic. So there are some people who sort of meet each other and then the disaster strikes. And so it's like years later, the terror may not yet be over. Ooh, um, when I was younger, I had sort of a thing for the Titanic. Um, the movie came out when I was too little, uh, not too little, but like my parents were like, um, you can't see this, you're under 10. Um, and I was, yeah, I know I'm like dating myself here. Um, so I wasn't until I was a teenager that I saw the movie Titanic, but I loved the movie when I saw it. And, um, also around that same time, there was like an exhibit at a museum that I went to and I read multiple books about the Titanic. So I had like a little mini Titanic thing interest. Um, so I think this book could really do it for me if it is. Uh, mysterious. Almost done guys I promise. So also the same day while I was standing in that new section I saw Girl Gone Viral and I was like oh I've seen this a bunch. I've seen this like on booktube I've seen uh, romance people review it and people liked it it was just generally you know it was just some buzz so I grabbed it just because I was like I want to be on the popular train too and then I was like, well, wait a minute, is this a sequel? And it says right at the top, author of The Right Swipe. And I was like, I don't know for sure that this is a sequel sequel or if this is just the author also wrote The Right Swipe. So I went and got The Right Swipe. <laughs> um, they had the paperback version over on the shelves and I was like, well, might as well. So um, the covers are not the same people, so I assume it's not like a continuing story in Girl Gone Viral. I assume it's just like another sort of contemporary uh, romance story. So I have both of these that I hope to get to. So yeah, so I <laughs> hadn't even taken a bag to the library. So I was like staggering out under, um, I, think I, had, I think I got most of these. Uh, definitely all the ones with the yellow on the top were like in the new section. So I got all of those plus the um, Tempest plus Bisa Bezik. Um, picked up one or two holds. So yeah, I was like leaving that library struggling. Um, and I also had a couple movies out and ready. So I have those here too. And if you aren't interested in the movies part, sorry. <laughs> so the first movie I have is Whisper of the Heart. It's a Miyazaki movie. It's about a girl who loves a library, and I think. So I was like, um, yes, Miyazaki is amazing. And Laura's library card. The next movie I got was Lucy. Um, this has Scarlett Johansson. I saw it a couple years ago and it's about <sighs> Lucy. I don't even think it's her, her name. Maybe it's her name. She Scarlett Johansson is like this like young like partier average girl and then her like somebody basic like kidnaps her tricks her. I don't know something happens where she suddenly is like a drug mule. They have like opened her surgically and like inserted this like mysterious blue substance or something and so she is told that she has to travel from point a to point b where they will remove the drugs from her pay her and be on her way and she's like thrust into this situation where she doesn't like understand what's happening but it's not like a street drug it's like this mysterious blue substance so something happens and like this drug like enters her system and it makes her super smart and like but then like 
too smart and it like makes her like evolve I don't know all I remember is that like this movie was weird and at the same time I was like kind of hooked like what the heck is happening um and I thought of it a couple times because like the ending didn't seem to make very much sense to me so I wanted to get it out because I did not understand it the first time I wanted to give it another try Next is Moana, which I've seen a couple times, but I went and saw it and I saw it when it first came out in theaters. I think I saw it twice actually because I just like loved it so much and I just was thinking about it not that long ago and was like, I want to rewatch that and I don't have Disney Plus. So I got Moana. And last is A Monster Calls. Um, I think this was a book, but then they made it into a movie and it has Liam Neeson and Sigourney Weaver. Okay. And Felicity Jones. So it's like about a kid who has like an imaginary friend who's like a monster, but like maybe he's not an imaginary friend. Maybe, but he's also, I think he's going through some like dark stuff in his childhood. So I think this monster is sort of his friend and like helping him come to terms with stuff that's going down in his childhood. I don't know. Um, I won't keep videos in here. I keep them out by my TV, but I'm just gonna put them here for the second. So that is my bookshelf tour. Um, I probably will put a few books that I own that I've talked about a booktube um, here on the second shelf just so that it's not so bare. Um, I put out a my August wrap up video, which I will link up here in the cards. And um, I used this space like right here to like put like little editing Laura always has snarky commentary um and so now that these shelves are potentially going to be filled I don't know where I'm going to like put that snarky commentary where it will be visible but that's a problem for editing Laura <laughs> so thank you so much for watching um if I fill up this bookshelf anymore before this uh video goes live I will take a picture of it and include it now Otherwise, uh, if you have anything to say about any of these library books that I have checked out, if you have recommendations or if you say, no, this book is terrible, don't read it. If you want to actually like correct me and say like, no, House of Leaves is not a horror book or, um, you know, the right swipe was terrible, pick something else, uh, comment down below because I would love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to leave those comments. And thank you so much for coming and checking out my checked out and my bookshelf tour. Thanks. Bye.